Now, I'm not sure the genius who dreamed up this idea was thinking too much about the builders who'd actually have to make their dream a reality, but boy, did they deliver. I looked at the design and said, uh-uh, go one more pass at simplifying it and then let's do this. But people had already fallen in love with it and it was, let's figure it out. In 2014, the project is greenlit. The first challenge for the engineers is figuring out how to make the 2.5 acres of man-made park, weighing tens of thousands of tons, float above the Hudson River. Once the engineers have surveyed the riverbed and cleared obstructions, the enormous job of creating a solid base for the new park begins. First, a marine crane brings a concrete pile into position. Each is three feet in diameter, up to 200 feet long, and tipped with a steel spike. The pile driver then hammers it down into the riverbed until it pierces the bedrock below. With pile driving underway, the next step is to create the tulip-shaped pots that will sit on top of the pillars. They need to make 132 of them, and no two are the same. Because of the complexity and the need for kind of accuracy, that meant that we could actually create a geometry in the computer and test it, make sure it worked. Then we could actually give it to a CNC machine at Fort Miller, which was the fabricators, and it would literally cut out exactly what's in the computer. And then you then cast the concrete against it. Each of these pots are made up of six different pieces, and they were all prefabricated up in upstate New York. Six different pieces are then brought together in Albany, where they go from being kind of petals and column heads, and they get assembled into a whole pot. The next challenge to overcome is getting the huge pots 130 miles from the factory to the pier site. We were interested in using the river to deliver materials to the site because from a sustainability perspective, it stops trucks going through the middle of Manhattan. The Hudson River takes the load, just as it once did for the building of the original piers during the 19th century. They bring materials in via barge, they work from the barge, they have a crane on the barge, you know, so it really is full marine construction. With the 132 pots in place on the pillars, the team focuses on turning the concrete island into a mature riverside oasis. To oversee the design, they bring in landscape architect Signe Nielsen. By using 3D computer modeling, Signe could design a plan that would be nearly impossible to fully visualize in her head. One of the things that I would have my staff do is literally walk me up every path and every curve so I could see what the slope was next to me, the slope going down away from me, where I wanted views directed. It was, it was a brilliant way to work. In 2021, nine years after a new pier park was first discussed, Little Island is ready for its debut. In a city renowned for its amazing architecture and engineering, Little Island is proof that New York still holds a torch for radical design.